Hey everybody, it's Tom here with The Solo Game, and today we're going to be playing The Lost Expedition. Uh, this is a really cool game that has three different modes of play. It has a cooperative mode, and a solo mode, and a competitive mode, two-player competitive mode. Uh, obviously, we're going to be playing the solo mode today, um, so let's go ahead and kind of show you what the play area looks like. So in this game, uh, the idea is that we have this group of explorers, um, and the rulebook does a really good job, better job than me. Here at the back, um, it kind of tells you that the events in this game are fictional, um, but they're based off of real people. So it kind of has these sketch drawings of the people that we're going to be playing. Um, I'll use that to understand better. So for example, this is, I think that's pronounced uh, Innis, Innis? I don't know, Innis, Yinis, who knows. Uh, Maxia, I have never heard of her, ever. But she looks like a really nice lady, and I think she's going to help us out a lot. And then over here we have Teddy Roosevelt, and this is going to be Isabel um, Earnhardt. So those are our homies that are going to be helping us on this expedition. Up here along the top you see nine cards forming this nice panorama. And our goal in this game is to get all the way over here to the Lost City of Z, I think is what they were calling it in the book. So that's our goal. And if we do that before we die, we will win. Um, we're going to die if we lose all of our health tokens or if we go through the entire adventure deck two times, I believe. Um, I've never gotten that far. I usually die pretty quickly. Um, so here we've got our path. We've got some adventure cards. This is a hand of six cards that I've already dealt myself from the adventure deck. So I shuffle that, dealt myself six cards. We'll look at these more in detail in a little bit. Um, but over here I have some player aids. A morning and night tracker and then there's an expedition leader token that we actually don't really need uh, for the solo game and then over here I have this geek box this does not come with the game it's just a geek box uh, that comes with a whole bunch of tokens or the box didn't but the game comes with these tokens I've just put them in here they are health tokens uh, bullet tokens and food tokens um, every member of our expedition team here comes with three health points to start they all have a special a specialty um, for example, Yinis, Yinis, Inish, Inish, not Inish, Inis, whatever. I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments because that's how things go. Um, is an expert at the jungle. That's her expertise. Uh, that's kind of what this player aid is going to show us. It shows us what the different icons mean. So she's the, the um, jungle expertise. Teddy is going to be the camping expert. And Isabel is going to be our navigation expert there. So, um, this game is super straightforward. It's going to kind of tell a story. Essentially, like I said, we're trying to get our explorer to go on the path all the way there and survive. And we're going to survive by making sure we keep our health up. We've got to make sure that we keep our food in stock. And we've got to make sure we have enough bullets. So, let me go ahead and grab this deck of cards, and let's talk about how this is going to play out in the solo mode. No matter the mode uh, that you are playing this game in, you're going to have a morning phase and an evening phase. And at the end of each phase, you've got to be able to feed your uh, people. So that's probably pretty familiar to those of you who've been playing modern board games. What we're going to be doing is ending up with a path that is six cards long, and that path or that adventure that we're going to be going on is um, going to require different supplies from us and hopefully it'll give us some rewards and things like that. Um, and in the morning phase, those cards are the order of those cards are determined by the number on them. Now, to start off the solo part, what we're going to be doing is revealing two cards. So we have a 23 swarm and then over here we have a um, number eight footprints. So on our journey, on our adventure, we're going to be encountering footprints at some point, and then at some point later, we're going to be encountering a swarm. So those are the first two of our six cards that are going to be showing up on our journey. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our hand of cards, and we're going to choose two of these cards to play, and the number of the card is going to show us where to add that in the path. Now, every card is going to have a couple of different features. So you might have some red up there, you might have yellow, and you might have blue. Let's see, I don't think we have any blue. Red, f 
flags show things that are required. We have to do these red things here. Red is going to mean that we have two options and we're going to choose one of those options to do. And a blue is going to be completely optional. So taking a look at here, um, this is telling us that when we encounter the footprints, we're going to have two, we're going to have a choice between two things that we can do. Our player aid is great, and honestly, in terms of graphic design, I wish they had kind of flipped the way that this uh, happened. But the black icons are going to show us that we're gaining things, and the white icons are going to show that we are spending items. Uh, in my opinion, they should have been flipped, but that's just me. So hopefully, I won't make that mistake as we're going through this game, um, but it's entirely possible. And then, so these are in terms of the resources that we get or the expertise that we're going to be earning. Now on the other side, um, it's going to show us a couple of other things. So for example here, when we encounter the footprints, we are going to either choose to uh, skip the next card in the line, and then we can advance one space on the um, expedition card, or go to the next expedition card which would simply mean that we would be able to take our um, marker here and move it on to the next card. Remember that our goal is to get through all nine of these cards in order to win. The other option that we're gonna have available to us when we encounter the footprints is to gain um, three food tokens, which is great. We're gonna definitely need some food tokens, but it also could be good to skip a card, depending on which card ends up there, and also to move our explorer. So those are the kinds of decisions that we're gonna have to weigh. Also, when we encounter the swarm, we're going to have to spend an expertise, and we'll talk more about how to do that, or spend a health token um, from one of our characters. So we're going to just go ahead and take a look at our cards here. And thinking about where these cards are going to end up, what kind of benefits they're going to give us, or what kinds of things they're going to cost us. So we're going to pick two of these cards to play. So, okay, interesting. So right here, we have um, like an encounter with this indigenous person, it looks like. Amanyane. I have no idea how to pronounce that. So this is kind of cool because thematically, when we encounter this guy, we're going to have four options. We could kind of maybe give up some of our medical supplies in order to gain his help um, and earn some navigation. Or we could give him some food and he's going to help us explore. We could also uh, spend a bullet to skip the next two turns. I imagine that's kind of like uh, fighting somebody. Or this last option that we could have, if we take a look at our card, oh, that's upside down, is death. We could just totally kill off one of our explorers from the game. Maybe we just piss this guy off too much. So I kind of like the idea of playing this guy. Um, let's just take a quick look at some other options. We could play leeches. He would go later on in the line and we could spend some medical supplies and um, a fish, and then what that would do is then we would remove uh, the last card in the path, not including the current card. So if by chance we ended up with a later card, and I don't know that there are many cards much later than 53. Like I said, I think they go to about 55, maybe 60. Um, I'm not 100% sure, I'll look at it later. But that's one option, we could spend those things to remove um, the last card from the pile. But if that's such a late card, might not remove anything. We just lose some supplies. Some other options that we've got is this mudslide where we could give up some medical supplies and some health. And that would allow us to swap any two cards in the path that we wish. Now, because we don't encounter this card until almost the end, that's the issue there, is that you can only swap cards when we encounter this card. And if that's played, maybe we don't have very many cards coming after that. So that's something to keep into account. This monkey, if we give this monkey some food, he's gonna give us some guidance and he's going to uh, help us have some expertise in the jungle. So that's kind of cool way to think about that. Now, something interesting is when you gain expertise, these will kind of be stored near our characters and we will only be able to use one of these icons one time. We won't be able to get both. We would just have navigation and jungle help available to us and then we would be able to use one of those. Um, I have no idea how to pronounce this, but you can imagine this is kind of a scary encounter happening here. And when we get there, we're going to have some options. We could spend a bullet and a medical supply uh, to um, 
uh, move on the expedition. We could kill a character off to move on the expedition. That's pretty, that's pretty heavy there. Or uh, we can spend a medical supply to gain some expertise. That's probably a better option on that one. Okay, this thunderstorm is going to let us skip the next two cards because we're hiding out in our tent. And then we'll have to choose to either spend some medical supplies or um, some shelter expertise. Camping. Um, we've already talked about that card. So I think in my brain as I was talking my way through that, I think I like the idea of having this card available. Um, it's going to come right here in our line. And we need to pick one more card. Um, I almost think we should encounter these guys, give them some medical supplies, and hopefully they'll be able to lend us some expertise, or maybe give them some of these supplies and move along the track. Um, so 44 is going to go right here. So we played two cards from the deck, then we picked two cards from our hand. The next thing is that we're going to draw a third card from the deck. All right, so this is a person, card number 22. It's going to happen right before the swarm. Jeez. All right, so that's kind of cool there. And lots of red cards. So what we're gonna need to do is think about the order that these things are gonna be happening. I'm kind of thinking that what we're gonna wanna do probably is pick up some, gain some food from this card, use that food to feed this guy and move along the path. When we get here, we can kind of use some navigation expertise. Um, it's kind of what I'm thinking to move along the path again. And that's our goal. Every time I play this, I've lost pretty badly. And usually it's because I forget I've got to really push myself to move along the path. Over here, we're going to need to uh, decide what's happening there. And then finally, over here, we're going to have some tougher options here where maybe we need to spend some more medical supplies. So looking at our deck, I don't see a lot of earning medical supplies available. I don't even see really earning food. The things that I'm seeing here are that we can skip some cards. I don't know that we necessarily, ooh, well, this thunderstorm isn't a bad idea, but the problem is it's gonna skip two cards and because it's number 35, it would go right here and there won't be two cards to skip. We would just skip that one. But I think we wanna use that one to gain some expertise. So I don't think we wanna use the thunderstorm. This, we're going to have to, uh, I really don't like this card at all. I'm hoping we can play this card at a time when we can skip it. This card here also isn't great because it's going to be using up so much stuff just to allow us to swap, and it's going to be the last card. I don't like doing that. The monkey, we could give the monkey some food for some expertise to save up for the night phase. In fact, I think, let's plan on doing that. I'm going to put this here and this here. And now, with all six cards out, let's go on our adventure. So our adventure is gonna start right here by encountering some footprints. So again, we could skip this card in order to gain some food. And, oh sorry, we could skip this card in order to move on the path or we can gain some food. I really think we wanna get moving on the path. So let's go ahead and make the choice to, oh no, I don't, I wanna move on the path down there. Skip the card and move but then we skip this card and we don't have any extra food or things. Yeah, so let's pick up the food from the footprints. So we're gonna go ahead and discard this card and we gain three food. Oops, that's four, so gain three food. Next, we're gonna talk to this guy over here and let's go ahead and offer him two foods. So we'll discard those and now we can move one space on the path like that. That takes care of this card here. And now what we're gonna do is, I think it would be a good idea to move along the path again in my brain. I don't wanna kill off a character. That would be a little dramatic. I also don't think we wanna spend food. We're kind of thinking about saving some of this food for the monkey, plus we are all gonna need to eat some food uh, by the end of the morning. So let's go ahead and um, use some navigation and the way that that works is if we had had some navigation cards saved up like we're about to get from the monkey here in a second then we could just discard one of those cards where we don't have any of them what that means is that we can go ahead and spend a health token off our navigator to kind of exert themselves and we're going to go ahead and move along the path again so let's discard this 
move along the path. And now we're going to encounter the swarm. So either way, we're kind of losing a health token here. We can lose a health token specifically from our camper, or we just lose a health token from anybody. Uh, either way, so we'll just say we're going to lose a health token from our camper because we don't have any camping expertise extra over here. And we just encountered our swarm. Next up, we'll bring these over here. We're going to have a chat with these fellas. So we can spend a bullet and a health to move one. Or we could spend a health to have some expertise later on. Since we're clearly hurting for expertise, uh, I mean, it's not great, but let's go ahead and spend a health. We'll just take one off of her just to stay even. And now what we're going to do is hold on to this card. And that way we have a navigation or a camping expertise when we need it. We've given these guys some medical supplies or some help. And in turn, we can call on a favor later on. So we're going to hold on to that card right here. And we're going to do something similar with the monkey, only we're going to spend one of these tokens here. And that's going to let us keep the monkey. So we've got kind of some expertise here that we can spend later on. And now that it's the end of the round, what we're going to do is we need to feed our people. And I don't think I spoke very clearly. It kind of, I think when thinking back the way I said this, it sounds like each of these guys are going to eat one food. But really, we're just going to lose one food for the entire group. And so we've eaten one food for the rest of the morning. And now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over to the evening phase. The evening phase works kind of similarly to the morning phase. The difference, though, is that we are stuck with the three cards that we didn't use before. And what's going to happen this time is rather than putting the cards in numerical order, we're going to be putting the cards kind of in the order that they come out in uh, with a little bit of choice on our part here. So to kick off the night phase, we're going to draw a card, put it here. We're going to draw a second card, and it's going to go here, even if it's not in numerical order. In this case, it is. But now, we're going to take a look at our three cards in our hand. And we're going to pick two of these cards to play. And now when we play it, we can play it at the beginning of the line or at the end of the line. We get to choose. So there are some cards in here that we're going to try to avoid as much as possible. This Jaguar, when we come to it, we're going to have a choice to um, spend two health to skip a card, or we could spend a bullet in order to get um, a jungle expertise. Up here, we um, are going to gain some navigation expertise and skip a card. And then after that, we're going to have a choice to spend some expertise to get some food. In fact, this looks like a pretty good combo. If we can spend a bullet to get this expertise, we can use that expertise to gain some food. Um, so that's pretty good. I, I don't know that we want to skip that, but we could keep in mind that we do have some navigations and we'll be able to skip a card. So looking here, um, I think we are going to want to skip these leeches for sure. So let's put the leeches right here. Now that we've played the one card down, we have a choice. We're going to need to have six cards here. Three of them from our hand, three from the deck. So we could choose to play another card from our hand right now, or we can risk it and play a card that we don't know, choosing which side that it's going to go on. So we, I like our sequence that we've got going over here. Um, I don't think we want to skip anything at that point. So why don't we plan on playing the skip here. And my plan is to play the mudslide over there as well. So we're going to probably want to slide these down. But just to be safe that nothing worse is going to come along, let's draw another card. And this card has to be played on one side or the other. Now we don't want to skip the jaguar because we need to kill the jaguar to end up getting the whatever that word is. Um, peccary? Sure, why not? So, oh, the river crossing. Well, we could skip the river crossing and the mudslide. Let's go ahead and put the river crossing here. And I'm planning on putting this after the river crossing, but just to be safe, um, Let's go ahead and draw another card. Okay. Ooh, there's a scary snake. Um, but shooting that snake 
could get us some food. So let's not skip that. We're gonna plan on killing some animals. We're gonna deal with animals here, and then we're gonna deal with some drama after that. So resolving these one at a time, let's go ahead and kill this snake. So we're gonna spend a bullet and gain a food. It's looking good so far. And then let's go ahead and execute our plan. We're gonna kill this jaguar, spend a bullet, and that's gonna let us add some more expertise down here. And then this is telling us we need to spend a compass to go ahead and skip the next card, which was the leeches. That was kind of our plan. So we could choose either of these compass cards. It's just a matter of what are we gonna need later on. Um, we're gonna be skipping those cards, so we don't really care about them. So we actually don't know exactly what it is that we are gonna need, um, except we do need a tent here. So let's save that tent. Let's spend this compass here. That's gonna let us skip this card. We'll delete that or <laughs> discard, same thing. And now we're gonna choose one of these options for uh, the, the boar or the peccary. So let's go ahead and spend our navigation that we got from the jaguar here. And now we're gonna gain two food. So we've got two food here. Next, we have a thunderstorm, which is gonna let us go ahead and skip these two cards. And the last thing that we're gonna need is to go ahead and spend this camping. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of that, and that was our night phase. To finish the night phase, we need to go ahead and eat some food. So we just eat one food as a camp, and we're gonna flip it over to the morning, and to kick off the morning, we're gonna go ahead and draw six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that process that we just barely did. So here's our six cards. I like to kind of get them in numerical order, especially for the morning where that matters. Um, so we've got that. Ooh, we have some scary stuff coming up. And so the rapids is gonna go there. So coming up, we have um, a group of people. We're gonna have these choices here. We're gonna encounter a venomous spider, which is gonna let us swap any two cards um, further along the deck, is my understanding. Uh, we're going to encounter some rabbits. Oh, and this is an option that we've got here. We could spend a leaf in order to swap two sets of cards. That could kind of let us rearrange things however we need to. Um, we've got that there. I'm trying to skip the words that I don't know. <laughs> We've got some dehydration uh, that's not great. That's going to use up our camping, or we're going to have to add more cards to the line um, at the end of the line. And then we've got this swamp where we know we're going to be adding some stuff in. So those are kind of what we've got. Let's go ahead and start by drawing two cards. And because it's the morning, we're putting them in numerical order. So at the very least, we know that we're going to be encountering some ruins, and we're going to have some options up here and we know we're gonna have some spoiled supplies, so we're gonna be losing some food. Now, hmm, the ruins are gonna let us take off some of the last cards. We can remove the last cards in the path, uh, not including the current card, so that's pretty good. And if we wanted to spend some of these supplies and expertise, we can move along the path. So that's at least worth thinking about. So knowing that we're gonna be encountering the ruins, what if we plan on putting some terrible cards? For example, this dehydration is looking awful. It's not helpful, it's just gonna make us lose things or take longer on our path than we want. And I don't like that. So let's go ahead and put the dehydration down. And it's numerical order because it's uh, the morning. I know I've said that a few times, I'm sorry. Next, um, hmm. So this card looks good. We gotta choose how to use it. Are we gonna use it to gain some food? Are we gonna use it to skip a card? Or are we gonna use it to gain some expertise? I like the idea of having this in the morning uh, to give us some flexibility. We drew two cards, we played two cards. Let's draw another one. Oh, somebody's gonna suffer an injury. Um, that's not good. And Looks like we're gonna need some expertise. We're probably gonna use this for expertise. We're pretty good on food. And so let's go ahead and look at our hand and think through the path and see which of these cards we want to put down. Um, so 
With this card, we can use, save the card for these expertise. And then we could spend some food. Ooh, we don't have that expertise yet. But we're going to need to spend some food to get rid of the last two cards. Currently, that's those two. And then if we have these things, or if we spend those things, we'll be able to move on the path, uh, which will get us nearly halfway there. We're going to need some tent and some medical supplies. Crap. Uh, that's not looking good in this. Ooh, lots of bad stuff. So we can't put anything here to skip that card. So what we could do is we could add a card to the end of the path. Not a great option. We could put this down right here and that would let us spend a leaf or a navigator to move or gain some supplies. Also not great. Um, spend some food to add a car to the path but move. Spend some food and a compass to move. And then we'll have the option to spend a leaf to swap some cards. I don't know that we really need to swap right now. We might need to think about swapping later. And finally, oh, the stupid venomous spider. To swap any two cards in the line to get rid of it. Um, and then we'll have to either kill somebody or lose a camping. Crap. We do not have expertise really coming in this round. We're going to kind of have to spend expertise to gain expertise. So, mm, I, mm, uh, is this the option that I want? I'm kind of thinking rapids. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, like I always say. But you know what? Let's do it. Let's encounter the rapids in the daytime. Slide these over just a little bit. We're going to put that there. So let's go ahead and go on our adventure. We're going to talk to these homies here. And we could either skip the next card, which isn't a terrible idea. No, we wanted to get this for the expertise. Let's go ahead and grab this for the expertise down here. And next, we're going to spend some food to add a card to the path or not. No, let's spend some food and that compass that we just got to move along the path because we've got to get moving along. So let's go ahead and discard that and one food. And we're going to discard this one that has the compass on it. And that's going to allow us to move one step closer to the end. Uh, it's hard to see because of how long this panorama is, but this is card number four out of nine. And next up, we need to spend a food and that's going to let us discard the last two cards. So we're going to avoid spoiled food and dehydration. That's great. Um, and then we have the option to do one of those blue things. I think it might be worth it to keep moving on the path. Again, I have to always remind myself that that's our goal. So let's do this one. Let's spend a food. Now, we are going to remove this health token from this expert here. If we chose, if we didn't have this expert here, or if we chose to use a different expert instead, we would have to use two health tokens to do that. So let's go ahead and use some food and some teddy. Oh, <laughs> whatever. We're going to go ahead and move one path or one space on the path. And that takes care of this card here. Finally, oh, but I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't looking ahead and thinking this stupid injury. And the reason that I say that is we just killed Teddy. And it's not looking good because we've got to spend two more medical supplies. So we just killed Teddy to use that expertise. Why wasn't I thinking? I don't know. And then we've got to spend two more health. Let's take one off of each of these characters. Yup, what started out as pretty promising is turning out to be terrible. Now, we have some options. We could take this off and kill her to gain two food. But I think we're going to want her expertise. We already lost Teddy's expertise. So we're going to call that good uh, and not do that blue option. So that was the morning. We need to go ahead and spend one food. And now it's the evening time. So remember the evening time, the way that that works is we have our three cards. We're going to end up playing these and we're going to go ahead and put out two cards. And just as I said that, I realized that I made a mistake earlier. I know. Can you believe it? I've made a mistake. 
but the way that the evening phase should have gone, and I just always make this mistake because I just am crazy, is we're going to actually pick one card from our hand first to put down. Um, let's play the this guy. Okay, and now we choose to play another from our hand or one from the deck. Sorry, I'll make sure I put a note about that as I always do um, for the part where I misspoke there. And so let's think, I hate both of these cards, so I want to put them in a place where we can skip them. And so let's draw a card hoping that we can skip something and we get to choose which side to put this one on. Okay, an old pathway. This card is great because not only can we move on the path if we add another card to the line up, um, then we also could choose it for the expertise. We could use the expertise to move on the path or to gain some medical supplies, which clearly we need. We're dying here. Okay, we're gonna put that on that side. I like that a lot. Uh, just to evaluate, hmm. Uh, I still don't want to play these down yet because I want to be able to skip them. So let's draw our second card from the deck. And if we spend some food that we don't have right now, so we would have to take some injuries, uh, we could gain an expertise. Ah, we don't have any food and there's nothing here yet to get food. So let's put that on that side over here. And since we still don't know how to get rid of these cards, we're going to draw another one. Ooh, okay. Shelter and food will let us swap and skip. We don't have shelter. Ooh, but we could get shelter from here. We were planning on using that card there. Ah, okay. Um, ooh, that could get us a shelter too. But we don't have any food. Ugh. Okay, so that card's going over there. That card's going over there. And there's still no way to get food. But we could skip this awfulness here. I think, do you know what? I think we're about to die. And we're going to put that awfulness here. And let's go ahead and start resolving things. Um, starting with the old pathway. I don't want to add any more to our path. Let's go ahead and save this card for the expertise right here. And now do we really spend the expertise? I think we don't want to spend the expertise. Well, we could. Oh, we don't have any food. Um, somebody's going to die. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and spend the jungle expertise right here to go ahead and move on the path. We're making a mad dash for the end and it's not gonna look good, but we're doing it. And that was that card there. Now over here, we have to spend some food. We don't have any food, so we've gotta spend health off of one of these fine ladies, but it's gonna get us our tent expertise. Uh, we're gonna die. It really doesn't matter what we do. Um, and here's why I say that. We're going to spend the food, kill off one of those people, and then that's going to get us a tent, but then we have to spend another food. That's going to kill off the other person. Yeah, this is the end. So if we go ahead and spend the health off of her because we don't have enough food, that gets us the tent. So when we encounter the pounding rain, we can go ahead and spend um, our camping card but we're going to have to also spend some food. We don't have any food to spend, so Isabel is going to take a hit, and that's going to kill her off, and that's going to be the end of it. So, disappointing? Yes. Surprising? No. Um, this game is really tough. It's tough to make the right decisions. Um, even though, like, okay, so we had encountered these things, so we got to swap and skip. Uh, that would have let us skip this guy. We could have swapped if we wanted to, um, but then we would have to add another card to the path. It just wasn't looking good no matter what we did. But believe it or not, I got farther along this path than I ever have before. Usually I die around card three or four. Um, so here we got to card one, two, three, four, five, six. We got to card six. So if we were able to move 
three more times, we would have been able to win the game, which we didn't, but it was still fun. Um, I really like this game, especially as a solo game, because it plays so quickly. It sets up instantly, like the video was mostly just me rambling, but the setup is really fast. Um, it's just tough. It's a lot of tough choices to make. Um, but it's fun, and I like having tough choices. So hopefully you enjoyed this playthrough. Um, I know that I made a couple of goofs that I've had to annotate, but hopefully you've seen that, and uh, that this game is something you're interested in. Awesome. You should totally get it. It's really cheap, super fast, great travel game. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Bye!